morning class. Today we're going to be doing removing and replacing a wheel on and off a vehicle. So we're going to start with a few safety tips. We've got to make sure that we have blocks of wood, we have a small hydraulic floor jack, and we have a small uh, safety stand. Okay, so those will be some of the safety equipment we'll be using today along with some other hand tools. So first things first, on this vehicle I'm going to be working on the right rear. Now your vehicle might be a little different. You might be working on the front or the left or the some other wheel, but in this case I'm working on the right rear on this vehicle. This is the vehicle I've been, this is the side that I've been assigned by my instructor. Now on the instructions it clearly states that I have to block the opposite axle, block the, the wheel on the opposite axle with blocks of wood. And I'm going to do that with a block of wood on the front and a block of wood in the rear so that the vehicle doesn't have a chance to roll forward or backwards while lifting. Now some students get confused, what is an axle? Now this vehicle here I'm working on this right rear the axle is, you can start to see the tip of the axle by where these studs are and where that axle ends is on the opposite side of the vehicle. So the rear wheels are on one axle and the front wheels are on another axle. Those front wheels, those are, that is the opposite axle. So I'm going to block off the driver's side, the left front. Reason why is when I lift the vehicle up from the right rear, all the weight gets lifted and transferred onto the opposite wheel, diagonally away from it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these blocks of wood there. So I'm going to put one on the back, on the rear of the wheel, and one on the front. Okay? So now the vehicle has no chance of moving rear or forward. Now, what I have to do before I get started, what a lot of students make a mistake in doing is they lift the vehicle up without loosening the wheel nuts. And what happens when you lift the vehicle up without loosening the wheel nuts is when you try to loosen the wheel nuts when the vehicle is up in the air, the wheel turns along with, with your wrench while you're trying to loosen and it becomes extremely irritating. So in the steps it clearly states, remove the hub cap and loosen the wheel nuts. Now in this case here, we don't have a hub cap on this wheel. So the hub cap is not here, we don't have one. But the wheel nuts are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tire iron and my tire iron has four different sizes. So I have to determine which size is which. So let's start with this one here. You can see here there's a lot of movement, a lot of play. That does not seem like it's the right size. Move to the next one. Doesn't fit on at all. Move to this third one over here. Doesn't even grab the nut, so completely wrong size. And the fourth one perfect fit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen all the wheel nuts but I'm going to do it in, in a diagonal fashion. Okay. And the reason why we do this is so that we don't warp the wheel or the braking system in behind there. And when I say loosen guys, it's very simple. We don't move the nut that much. Here I have my handle at 12 o'clock position. I simply wanted to put it at 9 o'clock position. Just like that. So from 12 to 9. So since I said diagonal, I do not want to use the left or the right nut. Okay. So I'm going to use one of these guys down here. And continue that diagonal fashion. Okay, so that's what I mean by loosening. You don't have to remove the wheel nuts. They don't have to be totally removed. Just enough so that when I have the tire up in the air, I can still remove the wheel nuts without any excessive effort. Okay, so I'm done with this. Next step is to identify a proper space, a safety spot underneath the vehicle to lift the vehicle up. Now since this vehicle is a unibody car, I have to use either the pinch weld or if there's something else. Now in this car here we have this little triangular pad that the manufacturer has included and this is for jacking. If your vehicle does not have that, you have to use the pinch weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my jack, floor jack underneath it, pump it up a little bit. I'm going to bring it within about an inch. You can see here I'm not touching. I don't want to touch yet. What I want at this point is call my instructor over and see if this is the right spot. I'm going to reconfirm. I'm not going to be overconfident and forge ahead because I could damage the vehicle if I jack it from the wrong spot. So I'm going to call my instructor and he or she will say yes or no if this is the right spot. So yes, this is the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jack it up. I'm going to raise the vehicle. You can see that the vehicle's wheel is lifting there. The opposite axle and the opposite wheel is, is, uh, is blocked off. Now how high should I lift? Well, I don't want to lift too high. I just want to lift high enough where I can put my safety stand under the vehicle so that it'll fit. 
Now, another thing we need to make sure is that we are using a safety stand. If I were to go ahead and work on this vehicle with a hydraulic jack underneath it, without a safety stand, this hydraulic jack might shift on us. Hydraulic jacks, including hoists, they're not designed to maintain the heavy weight of a vehicle for a long period of time. They are designed to lift a vehicle. So what I have to do is I have to use a safety stand. And I have one here. And I'm going to use a small safety stand. I don't lift the, need to lift the vehicle high enough where I need to go underneath. So I'm going to take my safety stand and I'm going to place it under the vehicle here as close as I can to the wheel under a safe place. I don't want it in the center here because then it's going to teeter-totter off of it and then we're going to have a safety issue. So as close as I can to the wheel and you can see there's quite a bit of a gap here and I want to close that gap so I take my hydraulic safety stand, my floor stand and I raise it up and lock it in place like that. <clears throat> now before I lower the jack and put it on, the weight on the safety stand, again I'm going to call my instructor and he or she will say yes or no if this is a safe place to, to leave the safety stand. So this is the right place, so now I'm going to lower the jack. In order to lower a hydraulic floor jack, you have to, this hydraulic floor jack, you have to take the handle and loosen the whole, whole handle. And we got to do it slowly. We don't want the vehicle to bounce off the safety stand. It could shift on us. So here we go. There we go. It's coming down slow. And this is what we want. Okay. There we go. Now, before I work on the vehicle, I want to give it a shake. And the reason why I want to do this now is because if the vehicle does slip off the safety stand, the wheel is still there. So I'm going to grab the bumper and I'm going to shake it up and down and I'm going to shake it left and right. And if the vehicle slips, I want it to slip now before I work underneath. Okay? And you can see that the vehicle is safe. So now I can continue on and loosen my wheel nuts. Okay. Noticing the, noticing the direction that they came out. The wheel nuts came out with the tapered side of the wheel nut facing the wheel. Most students tend to forget this and then when they reinstall they put the tapered side out thinking that it will be more aerodynamic while it drives down the road. That's not the case. The wheel nuts don't encounter wind because there's a hubcap covering it. So I'm going to continue on loosening the wheel nuts and I'm going to place my wheel nuts in a nuts and bolts cup so I don't lose them. Okay, so here's my nuts and bolts cup and I'm going to place my wheel nuts in my nuts and bolts cup. So that way the nuts are not on the floor and they can't be kicked around and fall into a sewer or something and lose them. That's happened quite often. I'll place them in there in a safe place. Remember, always using a crisscross pattern when loosening the wheel nuts. So I started with that one at the top and I moved uh, diagonally away from it in a star-like pattern or crisscross-like pattern. Okay, that's pretty simple. And you can see how easy this is. Okay, put it in the cup. So if I had not loosened my wheel nuts before I uh, remove, lifted the, ve the, the vehicle up, the whole wheel would be turning as I loosened the wheel nuts. And that would be very frustrating. And my partners would have to try and hold the wheel while I try to turn it which is possible when you're, when you're a group of three or four individuals, but if you're at the side of the road and doing this, and you're by yourself, you're going to have to re-lower your vehicle, loosen the wheel nuts before you raise it again. Not a mistake you want to make. So once I have all my five wheel nuts in my safety, my little nuts and bolts cup, I'm going to place it to the side. I'm going to place my tool on a tool cart or a bench, not on the floor because tools are expensive. Now, the safe way of lifting a wheel off of a vehicle. There are safe ways and there are unsafe ways. Now, <clears throat> this vehicle has been supported by a safety stand and we have a backup floor jack just underneath it. So we're pretty safe here. But if you were at the side of the road and you were changing this tire, then you have to be cautious as to how you grab the, the tire. Now, those little jacks that come with a vehicle are not exactly the safest thing but they are efficient in keeping a small amount of space taken up in the trunk. So that's why they have them. So when I lift the vehicle up, when I lift the tire up off the ground, in the shop with the safety stand, you can pretty much grab it any way you want to pull it up. But when you're at the side of the road, you have to be very cautious. If I were to lift the vehicle or take the tire up this way, and if the tire, if the safety, if the jack were to slip, my hand on the bottom half of the tire would be crushed by the weight as it hits the ground. 
and my top half of my hand, since the suspension would compress and the wheel would go up into its wheel well, I would probably break my wrist. So that's not fun. Same thing, if I grab the tire from directly 9 and 3 o'clock, well, if the tire were to hit the ground, if the, the jack were to slip and the tire were to hit the ground, then I would scrape my hands against the, long, the, the fenders or the quarter panels. Again, not so fun. So you have to come down here and kind of lift the, the tire off like you're a little forklift. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Now I successfully removed my wheel and uh, I can examine it and, uh, and then I'm going to have to reinstall it. Now your instructor is going to have a task for you to complete while the wheel is off and you'll have to ask him or her for what that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reinstall my wheel using my little forklift motion here, lining up the studs and the holes of the wheel, placing it all the way in just like so. I'm going to take my five wheel nuts, important, tapered side of the wheel nut in. If I start putting this wheel nut on this way, this wheel, these wheel nuts will come loose as we drive, drive down the road and that ha has happened under my supervision. Now you can see here how the hole in the wheel is larger than the stud itself and that's what the tapered side of the wheel nut centers the, the wheel on the stud. So we go ahead and we thread all the bolts in by hand. You notice I'm not using a tool here. I'm threading them all the way in by hand and by doing that I'm ensuring that the threads on the bolt are mating properly with the studs. That way I'm not, criss I'm not crossing the threads, I'm not stripping the threads, I'm not rounding the head of the bolt, I'm not damaging it in any way. Let's just throw, throw them all on with a few threads. Once you get on there and you have a, uh, all the bolts in by hand, and you're confident that they're in by hand, you can see how easy these are going in. There's no resistance. And if there was, then I would call my instructor over. Okay students, now I've, uh, I've uh, thread the nuts and bolts in by hand, so now I'm going to grab my tire iron and I'm going to put them in as far as I can and snug them down. Now remember, I want to put them down pretty snug, as snug as I can, um, so that when I lower the vehicle on the floor, the weight of the vehicle is obviously clearly supported by this wheel, you know, a quarter of the weight of the vehicle is supported by this wheel, and it's got to be, it's got to be snug, it's got to be safe, okay, we can't have a loose wheel, alright, so let's go ahead and snug these down, and of course, always a star pattern or a crisscross pattern. Okay guys, we don't want to uh, uh, warp the wheel or warp the tire or the braking system in behind there. Very important guys. So you can see here I'm snugging them down. Not too tight, you know, but enough that the wheel will not shake. Enough that the wheel is not loose. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to snug them all down here. I'm not manhandling it on there, okay. You see that? There we go. A little snug, a little burp on every nut. Okay, so there we go. So now we got the wheel on, it's safe, it doesn't shake, great. Now what I gotta do is I gotta place the hydraulic floor jack back under the car and again, you have to call your instructor over, very important, follow these safety procedures. So you call your safety instructor over, you have him or her identify or, or, or say yes or no once you have the proper place identified under the vehicle. Do not assume that you can forge ahead without any sort of confirmation from your instructor. So I'm going to place my tools on my tool cart, never on the floor, they're too expensive. So if my instructor has okayed the spot, I'm going to jack up the car, okay, lift it up high enough so I can pull the safety stand out from under the car, place the safety stand out from under the car, okay guys. Now I'm going to lower the vehicle by loosening the handle, and again, I'm going to do it slowly, I don't want the car to come down and bounce, okay, I don't want to damage the vehicle. So there we go, nice and slow. All the way down. Now, those wheel nuts are only snug at this point, so we still have to tighten them up. Now, how tight is tight? Now, everybody is of a different strength, so we have to make sure that we tighten these wheel nuts up to a specific standard that the manufacturer has put in place. Now, whenever we tighten something, we measure its torque, its twisting force. So, in order to do that, I need a special tool, and that's called a torque wrench. Okay, so here we have the choice of two uh, torque wrenches. Now it depends which class you're taking, you're going to be using one or the other. Now this is an older style, this is called a beam style torque wrench. And as we tighten the bolt, this beam will physically move and indicate to us how many foot pounds of torque we have. This here is called a click type torque wrench. I will set it to the torque I want and it will click when I get there. So I'm going to show this, the, you guys first how to use this one. 
and then we're gonna move on to that one, okay? So I'm gonna grab my, my tools, my adapters here. So I got the socket, and I'm using an impact socket, which is dark in color, flat black, and it's going to be uh, deep, and the reason why I'm using a deep is because I have a little bit of stud showing. I need a deep socket because the, the nut is further down into the stud. Okay, guys? Now, if I were to just use that, just like that, while I move the ratchet or move the torque wrench, I could scratch the fender up. So I want to use an extension. Okay, guys? So anytime I connect the socket to my adapter, my extension here, or my torque wrench, you can see how the socket has a little hole in it, and that's designed to line up with my detent ball. And the reason why that is is because now it has a harder time to pull apart from each other. So it doesn't come apart while I'm, while I'm using it. So I'm going to put my adapter here on there. I'm going to start with the top guy. Now in my instructions, it states that my torque that I want in this wheel to be 100 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if I were to tighten this one wheel nut up to 100 foot-pounds of torque, and the other ones are still only snug, roughly zero or five foot-pounds of torque, I'm going to warp my wheel in the same way that when I remove if I don't do it in the proper order. So what I have to do is I have to break that 100 foot-pounds of torque into, into three or four different steps. So I'm going to use four because they're nice round numbers. So starting with 25 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to turn my, my, my torque wrench here. I'm going to support the head of the, the wrench here. And I'm going to use the handle to pull on it. And I'm going to twist until my beam lines up with 25. Right there. Now, once it's hit 25, there's nothing stopping me from to keep on going, but I see that the beam has lined up with the 25 and I stop. So next, I go to the one across, star pattern, and I tighten that one up to 25, right there. And so on and so forth until they're all 25 foot-pounds of torque. Once they're all 25 foot-pounds of torque, you want to show your instructor, okay? Now, once your instructor sees, then you can move to the next step, which is 50 foot-pounds of torque. You want to zoom in over here? Mary, you want to zoom in? To the 50? So here as I turn it, you can see the beam is turning, and you can see when it lines up to the 50, I'll stop. Right about there. So that's 50 foot-pounds of torque. So now I'm going to move on to the next one, and tighten that one up until it says 50. Right about there. You can see there that's 50 foot-pounds of torque, which is, which is the marking in between 40 and 60. I'm going to do them all at 50 foot-pounds. Again, showing my instructor the 50. So now that I've done that, and you guys have good experience with this, next step would be 75 with this one, and then 100. And I would show my instructor every step. Now, what I'm going to do now in this video is I'm going to show you guys how to use the click type torque wrench so we have experience with that as well. Again, using the same uh, extension and, and socket, on a click type torque wrench, on a click type torque wrench, we have these numbers here on the hand on the beam and numbers on the handle. Now, since I left off at 50, my next step is 75. So what I want is this zero on the main reading line lined up with 75. Unfortunately, you can see here, there is no 75. We have 20, 40, 60, 80, and the other side we have the, the other numbers, 30, 50, 70, 90. So let's line it up with 70 to start with. So I pull down my locking mechanism. And I rotate my handle until the zero lines up with the main reading line and it's lined up with 70. And right there. Now you can see there that the 70 has two lines. It has the higher line and it goes down into the lower line. We're lined up with the lower line. That's 70. You want to show your instructor that. But the thing is I want 75 and I only have 70 here. So now what I do is I take the 5 from the handle and I line that up with the main reading line and that gives me 75. Show your instructor that you've, you've achieved that 75 and let's go tighten the wheel nut. I place it on there, hold support the head of the torque wrench and turn until I hear it click. Okay. Now there's nothing stopping me from continuing to turn this ratchet but I know that once it's clicked, that's 75 foot pounds of torque. I want to stop. So I'll move to the next one. And so on and so forth until they're all 75. Now, once I've had them all at 75, show my instructor, and then I move to the 100. 
So again, lower my, my, my safety lock, twist the handle <clears throat> until it's 100. Show my instructor that it's 100. So the zeros line up at the 100 and it's the lower line of 100. Show my instructor that. And then go ahead and torque the wheel at 100. There we go, next one. There we go. Now, show my instructor that I've clicked at 100, and once that's done, you have to, very important students, is you have to take this torque wrench and you have to bring it back down to zero, all the way to the bottom. If we leave this torque wrench set at 100 and I put it on the tool room wall and if I don't use it for a couple of days, it will no longer be accurate and we'll have to throw it out and buy another one. That's it. Put everything away.